What's up, guys? This is David, A.K. Reverse Long, and today I got Edgar Rodriguez again on the podcast. Attorney Edgar Rodriguez here in LA. He actually just came from San Diego, and he's he's all over the traveling, doing court cases, and yeah. we decided to do one one day a week of um, financial and stock education, and uh, you know. He, we're here, you know. So, um, so Edgar, how you doing? Yeah, David, thank you so much again for having me. Uh, doing great. Busy, busy. A lot of traveling, a lot of uh, back and forth. Even with Hillary, uh, Hurricane, uh, Hurricane Hillary. Hillary. That's right, Hurricane <laughs> Hillary, which is yeah. wild. Uh, nothing happened. Actually, I was in the office when Hurricane Hillary w- was going on, yeah. and um, there was an earthquake as well. Together. Oh yeah, you. It's yeah, crazy. I saw that. But nothing you happened. That. The, uh, the building it. shook a little bit. Actually, I made analogies of. Uh, with trading, you got you know, uh, uh, so the buildings are designed for 8.6 earthquake. Mm-hmm. They're retrofitted uh, because an earthquake in Chile, Chile has the most vicious hurricane uh, earthquakes. Earthquakes. And uh, so all the buildings in like modern societies, the, the in first first world countries, um, they plan for the biggest earthquake up to that date. Yeah. So this building is equipped uh, for earthquakes up until like eight point something, eight point six. Yeah. So like um, eight point six may never even come to LA. Yeah. You know it may never. I don't know the one in in, in uh in the nineties uh, in the valley or something like that. That one um was like I don't know if it was eight point oh, but it it was like it must have been something. It was, yeah. it was very dramatic, but um, but this building it's a skyscraper. You gotta equip it with enough just in case. So it may be overkill. It may be, you know, it may be the earthquake 8.6 never happens. Right. But in order to have that peace of mind when you take the elevator up to us on the 28th floor or the 54th floor or wherever, yeah. you need that peace of mind. Like, right. you, you know, you're going to live. And nobody, thousands of people come to this building every day or per week. Um, and no one's scared. Yeah. No one's scared. Yeah. So, like, every... So trading needs to be like that. It's 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 actually trading is very difficult to get it like that, but it needs to get to the point where you are, you don't feel scared. Like today, when I go to the computer every day, I, I'm calm, I'm cool. Like I've I've I have my rules in place, my process is cool. And sometimes my my rules are overkill. Like I don't short mm. any Chinese stocks, and there's a lot of uh, novice intermediate traders that are probably not profitable, but they studied a lot. They want they see, you don't know this Edgar but on Twitter I get a lot of heat because I say don't short any Chinese stocks just don't do it okay like get this out of your diet it's right. like a diet you think, but you know sometimes those Chinese stocks look very uh, appealing y- very appealing like oh it's you know it's gonna come down oh it's, uh, they see a, and, and it's it's with stocks it's, everything's money so people see oh I can make a lot of money but that one or two uh, out of out of a uh, these days is like ten. One or two out of them will destroy you. Yeah. So I, it's it's like an earthquake. It's like one out of a hundred years could destroy you. So you just you make the building so proof that you don't even think about it. You know. So. Right. Right. It's yeah. almost like um, the way that you ex, uh, explain the, your trading process. It's almost like you could do it like with your eyes closed because you already have your set rules that you um, already believe in and have yeah. seen. You know results. So, some people do it like that. You know they have these rules and they trade like they. They say they trade like a robot. They have the rules. They can disappear. They put their their orders in, and that's one way to do it. I I do it. Um, they, so there's a thing called there's basically a couple categories of traders. The main ones is systematic and discretionary. Systematic is like a robot, a human robot. You put the orders in. You have all your rules, and you decide. Okay, I'm gonna put here, and my stop is here. My mm-hmm. I'm gonna no matter what I get out of this area mm-hmm. or and it just does itself almost like a robot and a lot of people they can program an algorithm to do that but a lot of people don't they actually just do it themselves yeah that's one way to do it the way I've always done it was um, like my it's a discretionary discretionary yeah. is like as your decision so you like just, yeah. Me as a back, so everybody, you have to know yourself as a trader. So, like, that's the first and foremost. I think today we're going to be talking about that more. So, like, knowing yourself, like, for me, using myself as an example, because I only know myself personally, like, inside and out. So, um, with trading, too, you have to be very self-aware of, like, who you are, what makes you anxious, what makes you, like, what, you know, you got to be really honest with yourself. It's like, 
the screens are like a mirror of yourself. Right. So I don't. You, it's going to start to make sense as we talk about it more. But uh, for, so for me, for example, I'm an, a background in architecture. Architecture, architects got to be very good at many different things: structure, art, culture. Uh, you know, just a, a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, math, science. You know, um, wh when I did architecture to to start a project first, you you do a sketch, and then you maybe do the sketch again with watercolor painting, and then you you import it to Photoshop and you layer it, and then you come up with some concepts, and and uh, the concepts are of like the culture of the area where area the building where is going to yeah. be, where the wind and the sun and the yeah. shadow, and you use photography, you use drawing skills, and then you start to you know you start to implement your your knowledge about that you learn in school about structural analysis to keep the building steady and and obey all the rules for the code yeah. and, and you and you have to know materials like you know what are you going to use you're going to use glass you use concrete you're going to use brick you use what like what do you wood what are you going to use how do you feel inside this space so it's like I, an analogy for architects is like you're uh you're uh the the composer of a symphony so it's, uh, you mm -hmm. know, like Beethoven was a, a composer, and Beethoven he went deaf later on in life. Mm. The the, yeah, you know, yeah. the everyone knows Beethoven. Yeah, the composer. So yeah, uh, he went deaf, and he was able to write the the notes for for the orchestra while he was deaf because he knows the sound in his head. So he knows, oh, the violins do this, the trombone does this, the whatever the, the vocals do this, even. But he couldn't hear it. He just imagined because he, he knew it from before. So that is an architect in a way, it, but with buildings. You know, all these things, you put it together, and the building is the composition. So, okay, that is my background. I'm very good with that. I did 10 years of that, and I really enjoyed it. I loved it. It just didn't pay well. Um, so with trading, I don't do robotic stuff. Okay. I know of, I like to do the same thing. know a lot about... I don't want information. I like filing. Or, well, I don't like, but like I know the filings. I know the patterns. I know the technicals and the fundamentals. It's like a chess game, also. It's like six D chess. What What is the CEO thinking? What Who is buying this? Who is selling this? Who are the major players? What's the market sentiment? What is going? Then I I come up with a thesis, and then I'm like, the more information I get, and and the more of the puzzle I put together, and the more confidence I get. And if it be, if it goes by my rules and my my um it, we, so when we're trading you want to have like different setups a setup b setup c setup an a setup you you place a bigger bet it's okay. almost like a, like a bet you place a bigger like okay this is an a setup I have confidence in this this is a this is a good one I put more capital at at risk and you you, you have a higher odds you so the thing is. There's a thing called like back testing and like back testing is like you 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 try this you collect data. The, the good thing about trading is like um there's data on everything. Okay. You can go back in time and say okay, so uh what the the how many stocks went up 100% in in the in the day during a day for the past 5 years and how did they finish? Did they finish 20% down or where they started? How did they finish the day? And then you you collect data on that. Or like for me, for example, I, I for a long time I tracked my own data on like pump and dumps, um, paid pump and dumps. So when a stock they they send out an email or a text message saying they paid, um, to you know I if you look at my phone I have text messages every morning. A, a company paid a third party to pump a stock for a certain amount of days. So for me, I have confidence in that a lot. That means somebody is wants to sell big time. What what is that paid pump and dump? Because I've heard about that. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of influencers that were like caught in fire or something. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So so um, so when someone pays for a promotion or they disguise these words like marketing campaign, promotion, whatever. In other industries, it sounds good. You have a marketing campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Good. But for trading, uh, for stocks. If if a company sends out an email or or I, so I signed up for a lot of these newsletters landing, newsletters and yeah. landing, free they're all online you Google it and you put like stock picks uh, now or get rich stocks now and then all this stuff shows up yeah 
and um, you put your email. I have a burner email, and it goes it, it goes straight to it. And then the bottom of the email, they, they send out emails. It says a stock, and it gives you like the email will like have all this presentation. You don't even read it. You just go to the bottom and confirm that there was a compensation in the disclaimer. You put you like that's all you need to know. See, so for, with trading, for example, even like um in the filings, I don't know all. So you're an attorney, so you gotta know all the all the read all the paperwork and do you yeah. you do that all day long yeah see for for the filings there's a lot of filings but i don't i just you look for keywords maybe with all law you do it too I don't, I don't know i don't do law but uh but you just use control f and yeah. i look for certain keywords like compensated exercise prices one warrants one and then it just zooms in because like all these filings, maybe with law, it is a, so you, you got to know your strengths. So maybe that is a strength of yours. I don't, I don't know how, how, how yeah, law yeah, goes, yeah. but uh, you know, like me with architecture, I have a strength. So like I use that um, as as for trading. So um, but uh, I, like I see myself as a composer, putting all this puzzle together all the time. But um, but yeah. So with the filings, that's what it is. It's like you know, you're getting these pieces of little pieces of information from the filings, and then putting it together, and then like. You gotta use it. So if if someone has a lot of warrants at a certain level, we'll get into what warrants are later on. But um, if someone has a lot of stock to dump, think about it. If you if you own a lot of this bad company, this random company, let's say the scooter company, yeah, you you know, mm -hmm. you, you, stock doesn't do anything for you. You want to sell it. You want to cash out. So let's say you own uh, half a million worth of stock. You you so like for you. You know these these marketing people, these paid campaign people, pumpers. You pay them twenty grand, they'll pump your stock for three or four days. And this as a disclaimer, about this and this LLC was compensated by a third party to uh, for a marketing campaign for three days of this stock, and it puts the ticker in there and everything. So this is a this oh. is specifically for someone to. They're trying to create liquidity to dump the stock. So it's all legal. It's just it's legal. It's all like you're at your own risk. Yes. Yeah, you now, if they don't disclaim it, then it's illegal. Oh. Okay. So that's why in the bottom in the fine. But like, why wouldn't they make it? Just put it in there and cover yourself. They put it in very light gray, li yeah. tiny font. We can search for it. Yeah. But like people don't do that. They don't do that. Oh, okay, okay. And um, there's a lot of lazy people in the stock market. Mm. You know. Um, for example, today there was this um, stock M U L N Mullen, and they do uh, electric vehicles. And um, but it's like the wannabe electric vehicle; it's never <laughs> going to turn into anything. Now, I mean, the car looks okay. Yeah. If you saw the presentation, the website, like, oh, okay, this kind of looks okay. Yeah. Um, and it's the stock is under a dollar, so you're like, oh, it's under a dollar; it's a good price. The, the product looks cool. Let me. What this is a low risk? No, this is a. D this company is so bad um. they constantly pump and dump their stock All, so it's been like three or four years now they just run the stock up dump it run the stock up dump it run the stock and they run it to the ground they run it to like pennies on the dollar like 10 cents and then they do this thing called a reverse split which is um so this is a, this is very this is a good example of pump and dump so a stock starts out uh, and then it pumps. Let's say a dollar okay. pumps to ten dollars, and then it dumps. Uh, it fades. It dumps and fades back to one dollar. Okay. And then it keeps fading down to fifty cents or whatever. Okay. Now the Nasdaq, they have requirements. So these exchanges have requirements. Like uh, the Nasdaq, for yes. example, the stock has to be over a dollar to be in the stock market. And if it gets under a dollar after a certain amount of days, they give it a warning letter. And this is all public information, so that you, you you have to know you have to know to search for this. Yeah. So any stock under a dollar, you gotta be like skeptical. Okay, so they 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 need to figure out a way to get over a dollar. Okay. So like if for me as a short seller, if I'm shorting stocks under a dollar, it's it's I gotta be aware of that because they might pump it to over a dollar. If I short it at seventy cents, it's worthless company, and they want to get over a dollar. You know what I mean? They it's have like to. I'm, I'm fighting them. Yeah. You yeah. don't. You don't want to fight. You want to. You want a smooth ride. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm following. I'm you following, know what I mean? Yeah. So, anyways, this this stock uh, MULN, they have these guys behind it, 
for example, the CEO, he used to have like dealings with Death Row Records, <laughs> you know, Tupac and Suge Knight back in the day, yeah. and the Blood Gangs and all that. So like, he's a sketchy guy. As mm -hmm. a CEO, he's a sketchy guy. So like, CEOs are supposed to be squeaky clean, yeah. sharp people. This guy is sketchy. And you know, um, so red flag. And, uh, and then their stock always pumps and dumps. And I got emails for the past two years. Every once in a while, I get a pumping emails, oh, paid pumps. Okay, okay. And then last year, I got a phone call from a robot. It said, <laughs> it said hello, buy stock, M-U-L-N. Yeah. Hey, buy stock, uh, press one, or something like that. Yeah. So, and I have the voicemail. It's, but, um, so red flag. And Another red the, flag. And then, so the stock, they ran it to like 10 cents. Okay. Like eight cents or something like that. And remember, to be listed, they you got have to a, be above a dollar. dollar. So they, and they want to stay listed because that's this is their cash cow. Yes, or this this uh, CEO and the guys behind it, this is like their ATM machine. Yes. So and to list it on the Nasdaq is super hard. They don't want to lose that because once they get listed, they got to do the process all over again to get publicly listed. Is it's a, so this, it's hard. Okay. So, they got listed, which is golden. It's like so hard to get listed. So anyway, so. What they do is they do a reverse split. Okay. So they do like a one for 10 reverse split. So for example, if their stock was 100 shares, uh, 100, no, no, yeah, 100 million shares. Okay. They do one for 10. So now the stock price goes down to 10 million shares, but the stock price goes up 10 times. So from 10 cents, it'll go to $1, for example. 10 cents to $1, but the shares will go from 100 million to 10 million. Does that oh, make any okay, sense? Okay, yeah. It's a mathematical thing. Reverse yeah. And you don't got to do the math or anything. You just got to look at the, the software does it for you. Okay. But you just got to be an, aware like, oh, they did a reverse split because they couldn't meet the price. So they, they did this yeah. reverse split. And then the stock goes back up to a dollar. Mm -hmm. Let's say in this case, and then they do it again. They, they, they pump it and then they dump it and it goes and then they do it again. They reverse split it to go over a dollar and then they pump it they dump it and yeah. it goes again reverse split so I see what you're saying so like to a newbie I um, that one dollar would look oh, okay it's it's a good looking product it's a good decent price let me go for it but you're saying as you're more experienced as you're more in tune you've seen this pattern before and that's how you know yeah, it's a reverse yeah so w when it gets to like 70 cents or 80 cents they can easily pump it to a dollar and it has to stay over a dollar for 10 days. That's your goal. That's the limit. And if it falls way, now if it goes to like 10 cents, which they keep pumping it and dumping it, pumping it and dumping it, it goes to like 20, 10 cents, whatever. Um, now it's too hard to get it to $1. It's too hard. So they got to do a reverse split. Mm. So these are concepts that we're touching on now. But uh, in the future, they're going to be a lot easier to understand. It's just, like, it's just like I'm introducing it. There's the yes. concept of a pump and dump, and then they do a reverse split to remain listed and to make the price go higher, but the the shares go lower. Lower. So it's a, it's like um, it's like you have a how do you how do you do this, man? Okay, so if you have a pizza, it's the same pizza. You're just putting more slices, you're just cutting it more ways. Yeah. And then I don't know if this is a good example. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So it's like. The same pizza, they're just cutting it into more slices, making think people think there's more of it. Yeah, and then and then uh, when they need to make, then they just ch change the slices up. They make less, <laughs> yeah. they make less slices. Okay, makes you sense. Um, it's just uh, yeah, I'm catching yeah. up. Yeah. So so I wanted to talk. Okay, so you mentioned before we started the podcast, you you were looking at some of the stuff um, on the podcast. On the video, so, yeah. yeah. What 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 did, what did you see? Uh, yesterday I looked at the um, recap, I guess that you made of the day, August twenty second. And I just was very, like, um, in tune with what you were saying about your scheduling, right? So you say you wake up um, at 1 a.m., right? And that's to be on East Coast time? Yeah. 1 a.m. 4 a.m. Is, is, is Wall Street, yes. New York. Okay. And then what does your schedule look like then? Yeah. So first of all, I make, those are the trade reviews, and those are always private. But I've been making them recently mm. public after the day for the, for the night. And then after that, I put it private again because, mm. like, this is high, high level, in depth analysis. That, like, bro, like, I, I'm not just like a regular guy that does this for a hobby. I went to Puerto Rico. I learned under super millionaire traders. I spent like 20 hours a day from 
2018 to 2021, I still put in work. It's just different. I just enjoy it now. So, like, for me to put this <laughs> kind of level of analysis, and my the, my whole network is, like, really high-level right. traders. So I'm getting, like, these really good information all the time. So, like, that kind of in insight, it can't be public anymore, man. This is yeah. high level. So if you want to be a, a, a member of the YouTube channel, subscribe. no problem. Yeah, yeah, subscribe, for, su subscribe <laughs> and no problem. But I, I do put it out. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. For, for those people that are diehard people and hardcore, they have a chance. They have a window yeah, a little to see window. it. A window to Because, like, I would, if, if that was me, I would appreciate that. Because I didn't have any money in 2020, 21, not that much. I wasn't spending money on anything. So like that little window of opportunity, that's all I need to get in there. Just like just like what we're doing right now. You yeah. have a window to to, to where learn. I'm available to learn. You to go learn. for it. Yeah. You know? So, but yeah, but uh, but yeah, that stuff is only available for for the overnight. But anyway, so yeah, um, going back to your question. So, I made in 2020, um, May 2020 to all of 2021 basically. I was a uh, trading mostly the pre-market mm. so the pre-market so wall street the stock market opens at 9 30 in the morning right every east coast so here it's 6 30 in the morning that's the regular hours that's when the bell goes ding 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 and then like everyone's trading okay everyone's trading now but what well, people don't know a lot of people don't know people know but um, there's a pre-market pre-market so the pre-market starts at four in the morning east coast that's one in the morning here. Us. West yeah. Coast. So can you imagine? So the stock market opens at nine thirty East Coast, and pre market opens at four East Coast. That's five and a half hours. That's a long time. And also after hours. So the stock market closes at four p.m. Eastern, right? But it it's it stays open. To, they call it the after hours. Mm. So it's four p.m. To 8 p.m. You have another four hours. So right now the stock market is open to the West Coast. It's open till five. Five. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have if you were to combine it, that's uh, from 1 a.m. Basically, to yeah. 5 PM. Yeah. So there is um a seven hours, right? So if the stock market here in the West Coast from 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. So that's six hours is uh to 11. How many hours is that? Is that seven hours? Yeah. So. Uh, eight hours. Eight right? hours. So if if you really wanted to go super hard, <laughs> you could uh there's on, there's a you can sleep. Uh, after hours close till the pre market open eight hours. So oh, that's what you were doing. You said yeah. So in Puerto Rico, man, I was doing it here too. Actually, in 2020, no, 2020, no, 2020, I stayed. My main strategy was uh, 4 a.m. or well, 1 a.m. here until 6 30 a.m i would trade those hours okay. five and a half so back then during covid went crazy we discussed this last time the, the covid rubber gloves clorox masks yeah yeah, yeah. ventilators yeah. car company says hey we're gonna do ventilators yeah um they all went crazy and then in the pre-market they would uh there would be some um inefficiencies so the thing is the pre-market you got to think about Who's your competition? Oh, always. You always got to think about, as you as you start to develop and you start to learn and get educated, think about who are you competing against? Are, is it an algorithm? Is it a trader? Is it an Uber driver? Is it a, is it an, who, who's the retail? A newbie, a one in is it learn? A, yeah, so is it retail? And what kind of retail? And the way you, you know is like in 2020, like in 2021 too, you take, it, well, 2021 especially, you take an Uber, the Uber driver's talking about stocks. So when you talk about retail back then, it was the barber, it was uh, the Uber driver, it was a lot of lawyers. You know what's crazy is here in, in, um, in the US Bank Tower, I'll go get a coffee, and, and uh, it used to be free, by the way. Yeah, I heard, I heard. It used to be free. And then people would be like, you talking about stocks. And people that had no business talking about stocks. like older people and yeah. stuff you know like what are you talking trading stocks yeah. not like investment like hey amc or something like that like this is like no business people don't want so like in that si situation we know who the retail is so if you get like if you just take a if you're aware of what's going on around you you get a hint of what's really going on I so when i saying. when i saw the barber the barber's asking me about crypto about amc 
and then I go into and then this a couple of days later someone the the shoe shiner what do you call the or uh the yeah. shoe repair guy is telling me that and then uh the uber the uber guy is like okay i know who my competition is everyone everyone <laughs> and that's hard you don't you never want to fight against the crowd yeah. but you got to be aware okay this is the this is everyone now and then now these days everyone's quiet so who's my competition these days the people that know smart people hedge funds big traders the traders that that won from the 2021 a lot of them traders with, with more money like um for example people like me you know that that have more knowledge now that that survived survived yeah, the 2021 and, and became stronger right you know so a lot of those short sellers yeah so these days i'm fighting against a lot of short sellers um so it's like it's like the way i see it is uh i gotta know more than they do i gotta have more discipline than they do yeah so this is my competition so it's like you always got to be aware so like um we we're saying 2020 i didn't I, I was uh i wouldn't say i was brand new but i was i was just getting i was just i wasn't profitable and I, I wanted to get profit. I was yeah. working on it. I was working so hard. So I and I couldn't. And I I, I had a um, twenty seven, twenty nine thousand, and I was like, I cannot lose this money. I have to be very safe with it, and and uh, it worked out. But um, and here I am. But uh, but the, the thing is, I was I knew that I did not want to compete against the smart guys or the big money, the hedge funds. I'm I have twenty nine thousand. I don't want to compete against a guy with with a hedge fund with 10 PhDs and algorithms and all that. So what does that mean? Those guys, they're not up at 4 in the morning. They're up at 9.30 in the morning. So it's like, if I can, can figure, you know, and I did, I saw a pattern in the pre-market and I noticed, wow, so this is an inefficiency. There's no algorithms in the pre-market, not that much, very little. Yeah. Especially, everyone's sleeping. Not many brokerages are even open. All the people with Robinhood, they can't trade until nine in the morning. Uh, e trade, they don't open till seven in the morning. And and uh, I was studying so hard back then, so it's 2020 yeah. and um, 2019 too. And uh, for me to stay up for, till one in the morning wasn't that big a deal. These days I, I sleep earlier, but um, back then I would just study and I'll be like, oh, one in the morning is not that far away. I'll just stay up till one in the morning. You know, there was, you know, so that, that wasn't that hard for me to do. And then at one in the morning, I would just see the stocks fading. They would gap up and they fade. They just, and I would just, uh, it was just inefficiency. So like a lot of, so I noticed that, that uh, a lot of people were, let's say short sellers. They shorted a company, uh, some kind of company that went wild the day before and they get a margin call. So a margin call is when the brokerage wants the shares back and they for, they, they're they forced out. So uh, there would be a lot of forced liquidations in the early pre-market. So I was able to spot this. And you don't gotta understand this fully. The main concept is that when you, when you, when you start to uh, study and when you start to go over things and get educated, you start to notice these things. Yeah. So one thing I noticed, even back then, I didn't, I didn't know as much as I do now. Yeah. But I noticed, okay, this is an inefficiency. I can make money off this one thing. I now I know like so many different things, setups. I know I can trade all types. It's like music to me. It's yeah. Like I'm just in the, I'm in the matrix, you know. <laughs> but, but back then, I just saw I was a one trick pony. Yeah. It's like I saw this one thing, fade, and I know that will improve my life. I was so broke at the time. I was like, I just need to make more, make some money and just grow this little by little. And, um, and I knew, okay, there's no hedge funds that are up at four in the morning. Maybe there are. Oh, now I know, but back then I didn't know. But there, there could be people in Europe trading. It's daytime over there. Oh. So you don't know. But, um, yeah, Europe. but from what I understood, it was like the main, the main players are in the U.S., the big ones. And, um, and I noticed that there's less competition in the pre-market so and at 9 30 in the morning east coast it was 6 30 over here i stopped trading so, so i just traded only from one in the morning to 6 30 back then so like now i have the and by the way i did that all 2021 in puerto rico i traded from puerto rico's east coast i traded yeah. from four in the morning until 8 p.m 
can you imagine like the whole day i would take naps in the couch in the office that there's an office there a training office that i, tra I worked out of and um i knew the only i i felt really comfortable making money in the pre-market but i did not feel comfortable in the regular hours i was so scared yeah and i was just learning from the other traders around me mm -hmm. and trying to I was trading very small in the regular hours. I did not make that much money in the regular hours. I made money in the pre-market though. Let's say I would make $1,000 in the pre-market, $2,000 in the pre-market. And then the regular hours, I would trade very tiny just to practice. Oh, okay. You know, but that takes discipline. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people, they, they see, they want to make money. So they want to, yeah, they, they want to jump go in. For it. Yeah. But I knew that I, I wanted to keep the money from, from uh, the strategy that worked, my A setup. And I, I knew that I did not know enough and I didn't want to risk it. So I little by little grew grew my, my account size and I practiced. And then eventually I got enough knowledge that I started practicing some more and some more. And then now I'm very comfortable. Now I'm at a high level now. So would you say that the pre-market was a good, like what you it's just said? It's a warm-up. A yeah, warm -up it's a practice. It's like, you like baseball at all? You like yeah, you should like baseball, yeah. yeah. So baseball, they got the minor leagues. Yeah, minor leagues. So like the pre-market is the minor leagues. Oh. <laughs> But um, it's a, it's a good way to, to so like I, I have that now. So like right now is the summertime. summertime the yeah. summertime is very slow for the stock market. It's it's a it's slower. Like for me, um, it's it's not that slow. Uh, I mean it is slow. Like I'm not making ten thousand a day, twenty thousand a day. But today, I, what I made like three, four thousand dollars. That's pretty good. I consider that it's pretty good. That's a good. Double. You know, it's pretty good. It's good but one. um, but you know, I made two thousand in the pre market. Mm. So I, I woke up at one in my bed and, <laughs> and, bed. and I, I look at my phone. Yeah, so I have everything, or, so I have everything organized. Yeah, it's you a, said you have me. your desktop yeah, ready to go. I, ha I have everything organized, ready to go. It's very comfortable for me. And it takes a while to get to that, to set it up like that. that first, you got you to know what you're doing first, you know. But, in, but uh, yeah, I'll look at my phone. I'll see there's one or two. I have the scanner set on the phone, scanner set on the computer. And then I see one that I like. Even though I'm groggy, I'll just like <laughs> I'll jump up, and um, damn, I put my headset on, yeah. and uh, yeah, and then uh, I I don't have to trade it. You know what I mean? Wait, headphones for what? Just music? You like oh no, 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 no. I, so the headphone is, is uh, for the scanners. That's a good question. So like um, I have a uh, this a scanner called Trade Ideas. It's a pre-market scanner. It it's uh, stocks are over twenty percent up. It shoots them to me, and in the pre-market one is very slow. Um, oh, it talks you, to you. You might get it. It, it tells you only. It tells you the ticker. It goes like, like for example, today was B C G D, and then like, uh, it, it, I'll, I'll I'll look it up hmm. uh, real quick. So everything is like super efficient, super quick. But um, but yeah, in the summer, the, so throughout the year, I didn't trade the pre market that much. But in the summer, since it's slow, I know I'm gonna have to combine mix and match. I'm gonna have to mix the pre market with the Maybe so. If I trade one good one in the regular hours and then one good one in the pre market, I could mix them together and I could have an, a decent, like, couple thousand dollars. Yeah, like, like to you know, question. Um, yeah. before I forget, would you say that this, um, that pattern of uh, pre market and the normal market is what no, a lot of people do at your level or higher now? No, or no, is no it, one does it, it, yeah, or is it something that you still like? stick firm to to your guns because they helped you out in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So so you never really lose it, you know? So yeah. like I have done it for so long that it's just part of me now. Yeah. So like when I was in Puerto Rico actually, there was a big trader there. He trades like a hundred million dollars. And he's he comes in, in the morning with his cup of coffee and he's like, Hey David, good morning. How's it going? And he sees me, he goes, What he's like, You've been here? And I was like, Yeah, I've been here since the beginning of the pre market And he comes to my computer. He's just trying to be a sociable, nice yeah. guy, you know? And I know he's a hundred million dollar trader. I'm just like at that time I wasn't. I was just finding my way. Starting, yeah. I was, I was, I was doing all right. I was up, yeah. You know, I was just reg regular. It's, just, it's like what I was making was a little bit more than an architect at the time. So I'm still like finding my way. And then he's like, he comes to my computer, and back then in, in the in the office in Puerto Rico, there's computers like this, not as cool as this one, but <laughs> but it's it they're they're yeah big, they're and big. you can you can walk behind it and you can. It's it's good. A couple people can can be standing yeah. up and looking at it. And he came with his coffee. He just came to, from Starbucks. It's like eight forty five a.m. in the. It's like going to a job. 
Yeah, I know what so you're saying. He's, he's up eight forty five. Walks in. He says good morning. Yeah. How you doing? He has a Starbucks. He's comfortable. He's comfortable, comfortable with the sunglasses on. He takes the sunglasses off. Hey, David, what'd you trade? And I said, Oh, I traded this. This. I made like eight, six hundred bucks, something like that. And he goes, Uh, yeah. I'm, I don't know. I, I wouldn't tra- like. I'm, I can't trade that. And and then uh, because what I was trading was like, there wasn't that much liquidity. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. So these stocks. There wasn't that much volume. There wasn't that many much activity. So like, six hundred bucks for me was a lot. I remember at that time, just two three years before, I was driving Uber in two thousand seventeen, and uh, for six months, and in Uber I would go for a hundred dollars a day, and I would study the stocks a little bit, a little bit, and I was so tired I couldn't really study uh, until two thousand eighteen. But I was like. A hundred dollars a day, and then on Halloween day in Uber, I remember this. I made seven hundred bucks in Halloween because they jacked up all oh. the prices on, for Halloween, Halloween back yeah. then. I don't know how they do it now, but um. So for me to make six hundred bucks in that pre market for What's a that win? was good. Was I was win, chilling, for chilling. Sure. But for you know, this guy comes and he goes, "Yeah, that's yeah. not enough liquidity," and I was like, in my head, I was like, "Ah, this is awesome." So these big guys, they don't even want to trade this stuff. Yeah. I'm not competing against these guys. Yeah. They're waiting for 9.30 in the morning, so they have a lot of... Because if you have... Let's say if you're this guy, every time you trade, you, uh, you're you looking for, like, to put $100,000 in the trade, to trade it. In the pre-market, there's not that much activity. You can't do that. It's like it's like with real estate. Like, uh, real estate is Ill- illiquid. Real estate is way more illiquid. Like, if you have a house, you can't just sell it right away. Yeah. You need the you need the market to sell it. You need to you need buyers. Yeah. So the same thing like with the with the with the pre market. You if you if you're this guy with a hundred million, you have a hundred thousand dollars ready to go for the rent for whatever you want. Use your accounts on a hundred million. A hundred thousand is ready to go. Maybe one million ready to go yeah. anytime, any moment. You can't put a hundred million dollars into the pre market. Yeah. There's no there's not that much activity. Yeah. But however, you can take five hundred. You can take a thousand. You know, here and there, possible. Yeah, oh, yeah. I took two thousand today. It wasn't even that liquid. Was that on one stock or a couple? A yeah, couple? it was. No, this was one. I one. put a very small position on this, this stock that went up from ten dollars. It went to like forty dollars. Okay. Yesterday, ten dollars to forty. Pump and dump. Well, not kind of a pump and dump, but um, and in the pre-market, since there's, it just it just faded slowly from forty to twenty nine. So would you? Would you? When did you get in? Uh, exactly at one 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 thirty in the morning. No. Uh, at what price? Uh, like thirty eight in the okay. night. Very small, just a hundred shares, and I went to bed and I woke up at seven in the morning. So with pre market, no, I woke up at uh at four four thirty in the morning, five in the morning, something like that. So I let it, while I was sleeping, it was fading down, and I knew no one's. It's it's most likely going to continue. Because the pre market is dead. Okay. Just, there's no buyers. Okay. No, you know, um, now at 9.30 in the morning, which is 6.30 in the morning here, more buyers come in and then it could start to go up again. So I, I know what I'm looking for. So, like, I was out before the market opened. Because okay. I knew it was going to give me some trouble if, if I, because it's, everything is supply and demand. Remember we, we, yes. uh, last time we mentioned? So if there's no demand, it's likely to continue going down. It's, it goes down. Price goes down. When there's demand, price goes, goes up. You see what I'm saying? So, like, in the pre-market, there's no demand. Everyone's, Everyone's sleeping. sleeping. Yeah. So, if something is up, it's likely to fade down. If you, That's why you have to come up with your thesis. So, I w- my thesis was, okay, this stock is up from $10 to $40 for basically no reason. It's a Vietnamese company. Um it's a D SPAC. We'll go over that in the future. D SPAC is like this reverse merger stuff. Anyway, um, it, it was it was up a lot, and it, the demand is done, like in the pre market. So it faded from forty to thirty, and then once buyers came in or short sellers got squeezed, it went up, and then it came back down again. So like, but the thing is, the easy money for me was in the pre market, and you know, I never lost so- sight of. Um, because I, I started with nothing, man. I started with nothing. I switched careers, and I was like, I was very uh, 
in my 30s and I was like I can't you know I get this, I gotta make this happen and I can't mess it up I have or else I gotta go back to what I did before and um and uh so I never I always had just like in that Puerto Rico office 500 bucks you stack it every day and then you start to do a thousand then you stack it every day and then two thousand and then stack it so I've gotten very good with what I've traded I've, I've been trading like this for like three years now of uh first I was having five hundred dollar days very consistently and then a thousand dollar days very consistently and then two thousand dollar days very consistently and then now it's anywhere from three thousand to ten thousand and it's no, only... actually for three thousand to almost I never crossed eight over twenty thousand in a day but I've hit like fifteen to eighteen a few times that's great bro and it's so, only gonna keep going up yeah so it's so that's the thing so it's just about consistency yeah consistency so like me in the pre-market 2000 and or like every in my head 2000 a day that's 500,000 a year that's a lot 4000 a day is so it, the way i I've, I've traded everybody trades differently you know it's just like the way i i've i've traded was just being very consistent with uh i wouldn't say small wins but small to medium wins you know i i don't lose sight of that like there's some traders i've interviewed a lot of traders they um and it's confusing at first if when you're studying because like when i was studying uh i would see some traders that would hit a big win and they'll have like many losses in between so they'll make like they'll win like 50 percent of the time 60 percent of the time ah, i see what you're saying but but uh they win bigger so like you got to figure out what kind of trader are you like i interviewed one guy he said um he, he's a friend of mine from puerto rico he said he, he likes like the he's like the lion so a lion when they go kill the animal, they win, They kill the actual beast like 25% of the time. The rest are attempted kills. So he's like a lion that goes for the big, but they go for big kills. Now, the cheetah, I was telling him, you know, like, I, like I'm like a cheetah. So the cheetah is equipped like the, is an apex predator, but it goes after maimed, maimed prey. You know, uh, baby prey. Yeah. It doesn't go, because it, if it gets injured, uh, it, it could get like uh, it could lose a limb or something. Yeah. You know, it, it could uh, get infected or something like that. So, I like the, the the cheetah and like one of the books I read, the Market Wizards, uh, they picture themselves as a cheetah. So the cheetah, that's what the, like the pre market is like the the maimed animal. It's like the it's an inefficiency. Uh -huh. It's the easy kill, um, high odds kill. So I, I've always I've always liked that, and I think it's I think it's a good way to do it. You know, that's so, great, man. Because um, especially if if you want to stick around, like the beginning is tough. If you're if you're not starting with that much money, or if you're starting with money that like, because like, there's a lot of people that fail, right? And like I think the reason why they fail is because um, they lose morale in the beginning. Like it just it just hurts. And not it's not about not making money, but like to make money and then lose it, and then make money and then lose it. Or what happens if you just lose, lose, lose? It just it sucks to feel that way. Um, you know, it yeah. seems weird because um, yeah, because you haven't really traded yet. But like once you start, you you start to get those feelings. Like um, like there's been days in the beginning where I made money, and then you lose it, you lose it. You make a thousand and you lose a thousand. Like damn, then you do that a lot. It just takes a mental toll on you. And like you're not gonna know that until you start to trade but um but yeah so uh any any questions on that yeah yeah um well just a lot of information lot that's of why information. that's why we gotta talk first before we because like there's a lot to cover <laughs> what you were saying about it's people just want to go straight into the graphs into the charts oh, yeah, yeah yeah so like so the trade reviews right yeah. like i put them on yeah and, and like some people they're like just show me the trade review just show me the and like yeah bro man there's a lot man there's, no like, yeah like but see, that's why most people lose. They they want to. So I knew this one guy, man. I don't talk to him anymore. Shout out to you, Antonio. I don't. You probably lurks and watches. Who knows? But he was my college roommate, and um, and uh, we were friends for a while. And then after a while, you just got to cut him off. He's like, you just like, I'm going in one direction. He's going in another direction. Anyway, so like he is um, he's a, a nuclear engineer, mm. and. He w went to Los Alamos and worked at the nuclear factory there. He was making like, he was making like 250k a year, 
and he used to like really like shit on me, like, yo, man, how much you making, man? You make it, you're an architect. It's like nothing. I yeah. mean, two fifty K there's a Land Rover and and then I'll so me and, and my other college friends, we went to his place, went skiing. I never went skiing before. I hated skiing by the way. Like I'm just not a skiing guy. Yeah. But um and uh anyway, fast forward years later, um a couple he years later. Trading. He was in 2021. Yeah, and then he knows that I'm doing it, and he wants yeah. to know. And then I'm like, I'm trying to explain to him about yeah. shorts. It's on the phone, short selling this and this, and he's like, Yeah, 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 bro. Um, just, just tell me the stock. And I'm like, Bro, it doesn't work that way. I'm not gonna tell you. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and then he's like, Um, I know this one stock. Oh, I forgot the stock. He and actually he got lucky in this one. I mean, everybody got lucky back then, and he. E N D P was it? I don't know. It was a stock that went from like three bucks to if like a hundred, no, like more. I think like three hundred. Yeah. And he he just bought it and like he just forgot about it. And he's like, I love this stock. It just gives me residual income. <laughs> this is freaking awesome. And then he's like, I'm making more money than you. You say you're a trader. I'm making more. Than... And I was studying all these books. I was like barely sleeping. This is 2020, 21, 21, and um. I go to Puerto Rico and I make a little bit of money, but like he is like getting rewarded for his uh, behavior, yeah. like you know his degenerate be <laughs> gambling, and then um he's just like yeah yeah just tell me the stock bro just tell me the stock yeah yeah because yeah. you know when you, I don't know how it was for you but like um oh, you went to like a Christian college and stuff right yeah but um I went to University of Florida it was a party school no but there's still people like that though it doesn't matter where you go there you go yeah yeah I, so so. Uh, um, in school, like, you know, the, your college roommates, you go to the parties and stuff, you just talk to each other, like, like, bro, just, what are you talking about, man? Just give me the stock. Yeah. Like, what, yeah, 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 bro, I know you, I know you, just tell me the stock. Yeah. So, like, yeah, no, and, and then I'll be, I'll be like, bro, man, you got to understand this and this, uh, and like, I'm not going to just give you a stock pick because like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, just short this, buy this, like, that's not how it works. Right, you know? right. You have to put the work in. Yeah, but also, um... Because, you know, it's just like that leads to, okay, let's say it doesn't work out. Then if the other person doesn't know any better, it's going to blame you. Yeah. Now that, that's going to be bad energy and that's going to affect me. That's trying to take it serious. Yeah. Now it's going to affect me. And then if you did win on it, you're going to expect me to do it again. And it's just luck and it's just bad habits. It's just like degenerate behavior. It's gambling. And everything I do, there's nothing about me that's gambling. I don't suggest gambling. I don't. I've never gambled in my life. I never played poker for money. I never went to the casino, the slot. I never was, and I, I never. It just never occurred to me yeah. to gamble because, like, I grew up. Uh, like, we were really responsible with the little money we had. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm sure your family the same yeah. way. You know, it's hard earned money. Yeah, you don't just throw it away. So, um, that's the way I was. So, like, but I guess some people, um, they 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 have different. You know, on, they have um, different different views on it. So like um like I know I know some people they they like to gamble on UFC and stuff. I never understood it. I never did yeah. it. You know. So yeah, I don't gamble um, either. But see that that's good because then you treat the market with respect. You know, you you you, you under see like the second I I went into the market, I understood. Some people see it as a straight up casino. Yeah. They don't see the difference. Um, me I I saw as a, as a something I learned like like college you know you go, you go yeah, you learn you, it it's like brain surgery yeah. you go and you learn it and then you can do it um like it's it's a real thing but there's a lot of people who don't see it that way they see it as a casino they well, see it like gambling well also you know the time frame that we were in you know with the whole covid everybody and getting rewarded everyone was on those apps right yeah. like we talked about I guess they, yeah they didn't know anybody so I wanted to talk about that so the reason why those people are not here anymore Let's talk about the, to the 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 last ten minutes of here. Yeah, about the the reason why the COVID people that made money, or the 2021 they they didn't they made money and they they gave it all back. Everyone's quiet. Yeah, and I think this is a good case study. Because um, yeah, what not to do? What not to do? And uh, so with trading and with investing. And anything well money related. Well, first you gotta respect the money. If you make money, even if you got lucky. You better acknowledge that you got the, the trick is to be self-aware and you got to be really honest with yourself Did I get lucky. OK, I got lucky. I cannot repeat this behavior again. Uh, it has to be not you're going to get punished and you're going to get 
lose money as you get punished. But anyway, those those people in 2021, let's focus on that. Um, so they called themselves apes. They called you, themselves You apes. heard about this? No. I'm, a, I'm an ape. AMC ape. No, I haven't heard of them. Ape, ape. So, um, in fact, AMC, the company, they made a, a separate company called APE ape you can trade it on the stock market oh, wow. and it's it's AMC owns it oh wow because all these people on the internet like memes they would say we are apes and uh they're apes because they believe that um that the stupider they are the more they can make they don't want to know they just want to buy yeah i heard of the no board knowledge. apes the the pictures that were being sold the board, so it came, so this is the culture from that same it, time. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So everybody was calling themselves apes. Everybody was calling themselves, can you believe this? They call themselves retards. So this was all born on, um, I have the book here. It's called Wall Street Bets. You ever heard of this? The no. Reddit forum. It's called Wall Street. This is good. You, so you are fresh. This is good. You weren't, uh, in, this is, uh, you, <laughs> I don't wasn't have to un, you don't have to <laughs> unlearn it. Yeah. So, but, you, but this is a good case study. So, um. So they call themselves retards. They call themselves apes. This is all online yeah. on forums, on Twitter, and uh, stock twits, these forums. And then um, they, they would just call themselves degen. They had this whole language. Okay. Degen, which stands for degenerate. Right. Apes. They had, they, they had these shirts and memes that they made uh, with like a diamond and hands. You ever see that? Diamond no. hands. No. So diamond hands means uh, was like, okay. And this goes for Bitcoin too. Crypto, AMC, GameStop, it was all in the same basket of like, me they call meme stocks. Yes. So what they did as a collective, the people, Uber drivers, everybody on these forums on Twitter, some people, very smart people. But in, you know, it's like, like on Instagram or on YouTube comments, it seems ridiculous. But there's actually, if you were to see the actual people writing this, it might be the, your colleagues. Yeah, there's, it's actually <laughs> people. Yeah. Like, it might be a doctor in there. Yeah. It might be, who knows? It might be an architect. You just don't know. Yeah. You know, it's like, because like, it's all internet, you yeah. know? Well, to, to your point, I think it, it literally just means it, it's shortcuts, man. People love shortcuts. It's, if it's making me money quick and I don't but, have to but do But check it out. So they got rewarded yeah. for bad behavior. So like when I'm saying the, the diamond hands... So they would buy and they would never sell. And then, so that was the, the collective. The, the lawyer here, the lawyers were doing it. Um, the doctor, the architect, they just buy and they don't sell. And if they all, the theory was if they all buy, 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 it goes up if nobody sells. And that's what created the bubble. But then eventually some panic sets in and someone freaks out and someone sells and then it causes a flood, a panic. But anyway... The reason why these people, they, they had unrealized gains. Remember, like, the 1920s, they, they had their money in, in the stock market. Yeah, yeah. They felt rich, but they yeah. never cashed out. Yeah. Same thing happened here. So a lot of people, um, they had money, or the, and then they just, they lost it all. And the thing is, one big part of that is uh, the mindset. So with, with trading and investing, you have to have, you cannot, you have to be in control of yourself. How do you become in control of yourself? being self-aware having with trading with trading's intraday investing is long term what i do is intraday so like every day i go to the computer i i'm going to battle how do i go to battle like i have to have i have to be sharp laser focused i have to like it's it's almost like like before i get here a lot of times i listen to the rocky music in the in the on the walk here a five minute walk and like you gotta have uh, the proper mindset discipline you gotta have um you cannot call yourself like affirmations are big for me i don't really do a lot of affirmations but you'll never hear me saying i'm a degen i'm a i'm an ape i'm a retard first of all these are negative words why would you use call yourself retard you got to see yourself a positive light there was a, a trader i was mentoring he said david i'm just a gambler like no you cannot see yourself as a gambler you got to see yourself as a disciplined person as on your purpose like you got to have like a vision for yourself yeah you know and you have to approach the market with respect that's what I was you know say. so uh, respect your, your you respect the person you're about to fight you about yeah, a battle exactly so it's like you can't come drunk of obviously you yeah, know, yeah, yeah you know you you're, but you know if you have an account with thirty thousand dollars what it takes usually the day trade how are you gonna show up drunk and trade you know some people do that <laughs> and uh or like hungover, yeah. Or you know, so yeah. like you you need to 
come in with the mind. So it's a lot of the a lot of this stuff with training is like psychological. So like what if like for example, if you owe a lot of money to your credit cards and you have credit card people calling you or something or you have uh for me it was student loans back then. Yeah. Um it, it, it you're constantly worried about that, then like you're going to be trading your training's going to be off because yes. you're you're going to oversize on like let's say a C a C set, setup. Uh, a setup that's not ideal shows up you put too much money because you're trying to get some you know you, you're thrown off because in the back of your head you got this bills to pay or let's say um like my friend uh that i that i cut off that uh yeah from uh college yeah from college um maybe i want to prove him wrong and i'm trying to like i'm trying to make money because now i'm trying to compete against him he said he's got this stock from three dollars and i went to 300 and he's making more money than me uh, with passive income and i'm i did 10 years in school it wasn't an insecurity of mine for a bit you know but as i got profitable you, you start to defeat these things and become better you know more now I just, yeah, yeah more confidence you, you build yourself up yeah. it's just little by little so um but you have to be aware of these things that are these monkeys in your back you know the stuff that these like these boogeymans that, that uh human beings we human beings we have these boogeymans in our head all the time it could be our family it could be our uh debt it could be our you know our insecurities whatever the, the ex-girlfriend is calling you a loser or something i had that at one point in 2017 um you have to get these things together before you even trade because because then it's going to be thrown off and even with investing long term because if you have a plan to leave it, like, let's say to get Apple or something and hold it for five years, but then after six months, it's, it, it's, it, it starts to behave like not so much, but you said you're going to leave it there for five years, then, you, you know, you're going to be thrown off. So, the, the, you know, you just have to, like, with whatever you decide to do with it, you just have to approach it the right way. And... um you, with trading especially so while i was doing the pre-market and all that i was working on all these things i was working on my discipline actually when i when i moved to this office in, in uh 2020 what 2020 no no damn 2020 may 2020 um i had shut everybody off i was spending like 15 hours a day in here Think of, look, 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 like there's no, nobody can interrupt you. Yeah, this you is know? a perfect location, man. You just close the door so and you study, you know? So, like, this is, so, like, I didn't worry about anything. I just uh, studied all, like, all these problems that I had, uh, I just focused. We're both blessed with so, the offices. Like yeah, that, right? You know, you just sit, you just focus, like, you, isolation, man, just focus. And then, um, you know, later on I started to put all this stuff since I had the podcast, but, like, at first it was just blank. Yeah, man. Well, I think um, I know we're kind of hitting the mark here, but back to like this is it's so different, right? It's so because you have a look on this as an experience, as someone who has many battles under your belt in terms of investment for these types of people that we're discussing the 2020, 2021 crowd, right? I'm a newbie looking into it, but yeah. just as with zero battles under my belt, right? But just looking at it and again, how you and me talk off camera about a lot of things. Um, it's dude like things like this it's like it's meant to what's the word i'm looking for you the weak you get rid of the weak people like um i'm not sure how you explain it but the strong survive the strong yeah, survive yeah, yeah. it's like if you're disciplined if you respect it if you appreciate it the real will survive the truth will always come out and no, the absolutely. people that do it with the right mindset the people that like how you said i like the way you said it you respect the investment game you you don't look at it as a gamble yeah, man, it's yeah. it's inevitable. In inevitable, you're yeah, gonna win. Absolutely. Whether it's little wins or big wins, but you're going the right way. And and that's what we're doing here because like, you know, so a lot of people just want to jump straight to yeah, the charts. Charts. <laughs> and and a lot of courses start like that. Uh, by the way, they, they because that's what sells the course. The people yeah. are trying to sell the course. Yeah. See, so I always made my money trading. You know, I never the like a course. You always got to be skeptical of who you're getting a course from because the course is it, trading is gonna always make more money than the course <laughs> if you're doing it right. <laughs> if you're doing it right, so like um, 
you know, if you say, oh, let's just talk, it is not going to sell. It's boring. Just like my YouTube channel, The Friendly Bear, only has like 2,000 something subscribers. This is not entertaining. Or it's like people want to see, like, I just, I want to just trade. I want to make money. I want to, but that's not, if you really want to get, the crazy part is to, to be successful in it, you got to, it's very, you got to watch the way you approach it. And, you know, I, I, I'm successful at it, right? So, like, I know that there's a lot of information before we get on the trust we need to talk about first. You, you saw, we, did, we, in, we talked about a lot of introductory things. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff we need to even go more in depth with before you're gonna try. But I do, I do like that you're you're checking out the the YouTube. So the thing is, you yeah. can still check the stuff on online, but like it's not gonna make any sense. Right. It might make a little sense here and there. So so look, when I started, I just forced myself to like. I looked at it so much. The thing with stocks too is, if you keep looking at it over and over and over, you'll figure it out. <laughs> but you know you got to survive so how do you survive you don't trade yeah you, you trade very that. little so you survive just see learn. because if 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 you traded today for example if i say hey edgar man let, let's trade man let's do it let's go and then you lose a thousand dollars i'll be like what is going you're on you're gonna feel like you, you well you're gonna feel like really your morale is gonna suck i already know it's like oh, man this freak. You're going to feel like you got <laughs> punched by Mike Tyson like five times. Yeah. And then I'm like, yo, let's talk for two hours about yeah. stocks. You're like, oh, man, I don't want to. I'm tired. I want to like, go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, yeah. see, like, how do you get the knowledge in if you're taking those punches? You, it's very difficult. No, that yeah, so, makes sense. Bro. So, you got to you gotta learn first to give yourself the highest odds to succeed. No, yeah, man. And I appreciate you know? it. I appreciate the, the, the game that you're you're giving me. Um, obviously, you know, it, it's something going back to the beginning that I'm also very happy. You mentioned you've always wanted to give back to the community, the, the Hispanic community yeah, like that you're part man, of. for sure. Uh, financial literacy, something that I came up to you and I said, hey man, honestly, just growing up, that's not something that you're really taught, financial literacy part, right? So thank you for bringing me on Absolutely. as part of this segment. And Yeah, uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this into a playlist. Yeah, you and then it, it. It could like, people, like for example, oh, by the way, there's captions for Spanish and everything. Yeah, I saw So that. if you want to give it to whoever, when, when we build a, a list, obviously, right, right, right. there's going to be many of them on there. Yeah. Like, hey, look, this is where I started from zero. And I'm happy and you I'm know? excited because you said, th this is something you said, you documented your journey on the Friendly Bear podcast from when you started, right? Although I may not have the equipment to document myself, I guess I could go back to these videos and check. Hey, yeah, I yeah, remember. Yeah. Actually, oh. people still go back to like 2020, 21. When I'm here in this, I'll send it to you actually. I'm here in this office grinding with no nothing on the wall. Yeah. And a laptop. That, and you could see I look different, man. And like you see my progression. Yeah, it's man. It's crazy. That's but great, yeah, man. Edgar, awesome, man. Thank you, David. Let's Appreciate do it. it. So yeah, so um, next time. Next time, probably ne next week. Next week, yes, yeah, sir. Absolutely. All right, guys. All right. See you later. Thank you.